is up good and wonderful people today i want to talk about the new netflix original show dark and if you have not watched it you have problems stop what you're doing immediately and go watch it right now before i get started talking about this video these are going to be theories and predictions about the next season which means it will spoil things for season one you have been warned. Go watch season one and then come back. Netflix has done it again, people. They have done it again. Netflix is on a roll. I mean, they've had a lot of missteps along the way, but they're getting into it. They're getting their groove and giving us some great and awesome original content. This new show is weird, mysterious, crazy, and confusing in a good way, and I am loving it every single episode. Now, Wikipedia lists this show as a German supernatural family drama. Okay, trust me. I know when you think of family drama, you think about something like best case scenario, family going through a few things, seventh heaven, parenthood, worst case scenario, family going through a lot of stuff, shameless, the Sopranos, the Americans. But as far as a family drama is concerned, Dark makes those last three look like family members. And before all you American version shameless fans try to get all up in my shit, I'm not saying it's better, but one has a shitty alcoholic dad and one has a shitty dad who's a time-traveling child beater. So, yeah. So let's talk about some things that may happen, may not happen in season two. And to all my German fans out there and people who love people to make sure they pronounce things correctly, I may fuck up one of these German names. I apologize in advance. My bad. I love you from the deepest part of my robot heart. Okay, last time we see this character, he's getting beat on what I assume is a daily basis back in the 50s. So they think he killed three kids, two unknowns that I'm pretty sure they're going to be revealed in season two, and one kid who grows up to be, if I'm pronouncing this correctly, Hel Hel Helg, 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 I'm just going to say Helg, just going to, just going to, just going to leave it there. The security guard, the guy with the one ear. And we know that plan didn't work. So how in the hell will he get back? How will he convince the cop, the young version of the old cop who harassed him when he was your, that is so, I just thought about that. While saying this, I just put it together that when he was a kid, the cop harassed him as old cop. But now as young cop, he's now beating the shit out of him as old. Wow. Just put that together. So there has to be a way in season two for him to get out and get back in time. But then again, we see him in the paper when the other detective is looking and sees his name in a paper from the 50s. I don't know how he's going to get out of this, but I feel like he will convince the cop that all this is happening, that he says is happening. Because once the kid comes out that he's not dead, then he has no choice unless they never find the kid in the first place. Noah, don't know what the hell his issue is. Don't know where he's from. Who is he? What time period is he from? Now, I feel like he just takes on a name because he sees the time machine as the arc, as his arc, and that he will usher in a new world free of sin and corruption and all that good shit. Good luck. It didn't really work the first time. So <laughs> uh, he's been seen in all three timelines as far as I remember, but I feel like he's not like the big boss. I feel like his boss, the person who tells him what to do, will be revealing himself in season two. Also, what timeline is he originally from? I don't remember seeing him as a kid at any point or as a young adult. So he could be from any one of the three timelines. Who knows? And now the question is, does he use the caves to go th between the three timelines? I know that seems to be the way to get to the three timelines. But every time we see somebody use the cave to go to the different timelines, they come out of the cave, what? Dirty, beaten up looking, disgusting. You know, he comes, every time we see him, he's, clean and ironed and not a speck of dirt on him so what the hell is he using he may be using the caves and cleaning up real fast and we don't see that part but i don't know i have i have a feeling he knows another way around it up hannah is seen at the at the end of the last episode with a gun that gun is either for a yorick or charlotte one of the two because both of them have came into her house and tried to beat her up and tried to choke the shit out of her. So yeah, it could be for either one of them two. It actually could be for herself. She is batshit crazy. She's already said that she wants York and she'll do anything to get it. When when the side chick shows up at your house with a casserole, she crazy. She is crazy as hell. Crazy. But I feel like that craziness will be another photo of. We saw her through each timeline 
being a straight bitch and lying and doing what she could to be with Yorick from just, I mean, from early, early on. So I got to feel that's going to be eventually her downfall with everything. Again, apology if I'm pronouncing his name wrong. Helg, I think. I don't know. Uh, Helg. But does his sacrifice change anything as old version him? Old version him tries to kill, I guess you could say, middle-aged him. But he only ends up killing himself. So, I, I don't know. I don't think it's going to change much because everything that middle age him has done has already happened. So he missed it by a, a couple of days already over a couple of months already. Everything that is that happened to all the kids has happened to has already happened as far as I know. So he didn't do much of anything unless he knew he was going to die in that car accident because he's super old and fragile. And then they go maybe... I don't know, it could be possible for them to them to like to ID him and then find out that's him. So I'm, I know DNA technology back then may not be super advanced, but I feel like they're going to figure out a way to figure out that that's him and then all hell is going to break loose as far as that's concerned. What the fuck does the chair do? When we first see it, it looks like an electric chair. Uh, that's what I thought it was. I thought it was some torture device and with it being in, in a kid's room, I thought whoever it was was torturing kids. Of course, that's how we put the two and two together with the kids' um, eyes. I think it's Mads um, who end up dying and put in the chair. But what is what does that chair have to do with the actual time machine itself? To me, I, it's like three components here. I'm getting to one in just a second. It's the box, the cave, and the chair. I don't understand how those three things come together. To, like I just like the only thing that seems to work or have anything to really do with actual time travel is the cave. So I don't understand how the chair comes into place here. The very last scene of the very last episode, we see uh, cars blown up on fire or wreckage. You even look in the background and you see the nuclear power plant. Looks like it's been probably bombed or blown up or something's happened to it. you see like the, the, the big smoke stacks are, are crumbling uh torn up so who the hell started that and i'm i got a feeling this is a like they're thrown into the future and something somebody did change something and i know guys i'm gonna go ahead and get into this one right quick timeline rules or time travel rules uh, we already see that they don't go by what we are used to as time travel rules, for example, like Back to the Future, where if you affect something in the past, it directly affects something in the future. So we, we do see pieces of that, but it doesn't affect anything directly. Because, like, even the one kid is warned, like, if you go and you find um, Nickel and you bring Nickel back, Nickel's actually your dad, so you won't be born. And that's okay. All right, fine. But we see other things happen in the past that don't even directly affect the future at all. So I think maybe Noah was lying to to the, the, the one guy and telling him, you need to tell him if he takes Nickel back. I did not mean for that to say Nickel back, but <laughs> Nickel. Uh if um he he brings him back, that it'll change. I don't think it will. I don't think if he would have ended up bringing uh, Mickle, Mickle back, if he ends up bringing him back, I don't think it will change anything. I think Noah's full of shit, and I don't think even he knows the rules to this, so that's why he's making shit up as he goes. And I think that, I don't know, I, I really feel like Yurik being arrested where he is may affect, like, why doesn't the, like, the cop, the old cop never mentions at any time that when he was a kid, he knew some, I don't know. I know there is, I'm going to watch the show again, but the time, lab, tra, time travel rules are pretty comp, uh, uh, confusing, but I think I get the gist of it, but I think more of it will be fleshed out in season two. What does the box do? I just asked what the chair does. What does the box actually do? We've seen it move. We've seen the three pillars come up. I think the three pillars probably represent past, present, and future. But I think that the box doesn't actually 
make you travel in time, I think maybe the box helps create different timelines. I know, just kind of saying how confusing the time travel rules are in the first place, it, it's like the box has to affect something else. Like what, because I think the clock maker, the guy who fixes the clock, I, I can't remember his name, he's the one who fixes, the, the who makes the box, I think. But no, he doesn't make the box. He it's taken to him so he can figure out how the hell the box works in the first place. And then why is it activated or why does it interfere with electricity? And why is the phone a part of it? We get a few glimpses in the cave and in the truck of some toxic waste barrels. But it does I don't think there's toxic waste in those barrels. Um we we get the one guy opens up one of the barrels and we don't see anything. Uh, you know, he just kind of looks down. So if it was toxic waste, he would have popped it open and he would have died, breathed it in, you know, something. So I gotta either say that it is some type of material that may be used for time travel, which is a stretch, or dead bodies that the people who own the nuclear plant know, they know that Noah's in charge of that, and they've been experimenting on people and kids. And that's when they get rid of the body. They put them in the barrels. Because that's the only thing I can think of. to, Because we know it's not toxic waste. Because like I said, he opens it up. And it doesn't just you know kill him instantly or whatever. So it has to be that. It has to either be something new with the time machine directly. Or it has to be dead bodies of victims who they put in that chair or experimented on. And last, my last theory for season two is the hooker. The, the, um, the cross dresser i don't know the technical term but the man in the dress who services other men we've been pulled to that character a few times already what is the importance what do they really know like the thing about this show is every character you meet has something to do with something no matter what you're going to meet them their their young version their old version the present version regardless every character in this show has a point Nobody's just wandering around aimlessly doing nothing and doesn't affect the story. So the hooker can't just be somebody who is sleeping with everybody's wives in town. And I feel like season two will reveal exactly who that person is or was. I feel like it is a person from a time before and it's came to the future and doing this because I'm, I'm sure like if you looked up like the now, like if you come from the past, you can't exactly use the social security number and everything. They're going to figure you out real quick. Like, wait, you've been gone for like 30 something years. So I got to assume that it's somebody from the past to the future. And this is what they're doing now. Maybe they know some secrets. Cause you know, we've seen plenty of movies where prostitutes and hookers have like fucking government secret. Cause these motherfuckers can't talk to anybody. So they feel like, Hey, I've just paid you 300 bucks. I'm going to tell you my secrets. So, guys, that is my predictions and theories and questions for Season 2 of Dark. If you had not checked out the show, please do yourself a favor. Go watch it. It's 10 episodes, about 45 minutes apiece. So, I'd say about 9 hours of, of binging. So, not too bad, to be honest with you. And uh, it's worth it's worth a watch. Also, do if you're reading an article about this show and you see it's being compared to Stranger Things, there's no point to that. It is not anything like Stranger Things. It is not on the same plane as Stranger Things. It is not in the same realm of Stranger Things. The only thing that I can tell you is that A, there's kids in one. B, crazy shit happens. That is it. And that's like 20 other fucking shows on television right now that has kids and crazy shit in it. So yeah, guys, don't believe that bullshit. Go watch it. Enjoy it. Love it for what it is. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, I have a podcast called The Sons of Action. Uh, we put a podcast every Sunday on SoundCloud, and we're also on iTunes. If you guys want to check out the link down below, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you, and I'll see you guys next time.